I would like to talk to you a little bit about labor as an introduction to the chapter on labor. Labor has a supply and demand just like every other product. And the, where supply and demand intersect is the natural rate of labor. However, there's something different about labor. It's an indirect demand. There is not a direct demand for someone to hire a hamburger flipper. The demand is for the hamburger. So McDonald's hires a hamburger flipper because there's a demand for the hamburger. If there's no demand for the hamburger, there is no longer a demand for the hamburger flipper. So the demand for labor is an indirect demand. <clears throat> um, this is one of the great secrets. If you want to know how to make more money, I can tell you, you have to produce more for your company and then you're more valuable for your company. If you generate more revenue for the company, they have to pay you more because you're more valuable for them. So let's look a little bit at pay. Here's a good question. If you own a McDonald's and you have two applicants for your hamburger flipper job and one is a college graduate and one is a high school graduate, which should you hire? Well, there's a lot of thought process that you can go there. You can say, well, the college graduate is more responsible, has more skills and knowledge. Or you could say, well, maybe the college graduate will quit and not want to be dependable because he wants a better job. Uh, none of that matters. What matters, well, I'm sorry, it, it of course does matter indirectly, but what matters is who is the better hamburger flipper. And whether they're a college graduate or a high school graduate doesn't have anything to do with that. So you're hiring for a particular skill set. Um, <clears throat> I've known people who had really nice degrees and ended up working at Home Depot and they were frustrated. But they had to realize the reason Home Depot hired them is not because of their degree, but because of the labor they could do working on the floor, the sales floor in Home Depot. Okay, let's take a look at an example of LeBron James. He makes hundreds of millions of dollars for playing a game. And I tell you what, I would be willing to play for a whole lot less than they pay him. So the Lakers could save a lot of money hiring me. Now this is silly. You say, oh, obviously they want to do that. Why? Remember, what does LeBron James do for Lakers? He generates ticket sales, TV revenue, sponsorships, and things like that. So they pay him all that money because they think having him will bring in more money to their franchise than if than they pay him. That's the, the deal. Now with me, I won't bring in any TV revenue, probably no ticket sales, maybe my wife will buy one once. <laughs> but, and so they aren't willing to pay me because I will not bring in revenue for them. Let's look at another example, Denzel Washington. Famous actor, Denzel Washington, famous actor, makes a lot of money. He can make up to $20 million for a, a high budget movie. And how long does it take to make a movie? About three months. And it's sometimes hard work, long hours. But how much is $20 million in three months? It's about $1.7 million a week. So what's Denzel worth? He says, I am worth $1.7 million a week. How does that play out? Well, uh, he was recently in a Broadway show called Fences. A Broadway theater is different than a movie. A Broadway theater has about a thousand seats maybe you can put in there. They sell for a hundred twenty dollars a show and they do eight shows a week. So the total revenue is like one million dollars a week. Well what are they willing to pay Denzel to be in that play? He could say I'm worth 1.7 million dollars. That's what they paid me at my last job. But the Broadway theater is only willing to pay him what he can add to their revenue. So let's say, for instance, that without Denzel, they have 10% empty seats. With Denzel, they fill the house. That means he's worth 10% of their seat revenue for them, which is 100000 a week. 
That's a huge difference to be worth either 100,000 a week or 1.7 million a week. But what you see is someone is worth what they can contribute to the business. Okay, study the chapter on labor and let's talk about the questions you have on it. Uh, remember, labor has a supply and demand. Labor is an in indirect demand and you're worth what you can produce for your business. Well, we'll follow up more on this in class.